Right, Major League Baseball opening day 2022. Welcome, everybody. This is our Out of the Park 22 Buck Showalter New York Mets series. If you've missed the previous episodes, what we're doing is uh, putting Buck Showalter in charge of the Mets. We started in 2021. We gave him a year head start of real life and seeing if we can get him a ring over his three-year contract. Uh, we made the postseason in season one, but uh, did not win the World Series. And we had a heck of an offseason. Uh, going into the 2022 season, and now we're at opening day. Uh, we are predicted to win 104 games, win the, a the NL East, sorry, <laughs> so used to playing the American League as the Orioles, uh, by 21 games over the Braves. So Braves, Phillies, Marlins, Nats, nothing too exciting coming from them. The 104 wins, the only other team that is over even 96 wins, are the, or I'm sorry, the Padres are 97, they're third. Uh, are the Dodgers at 108. So despite the fact that we uh, traded for Corey Seager, uh, they are still far ahead of us. Now, our offense is really not predicted to be amazing. I mean, 776 looks upper mid of the pack here, but the Dodgers at 901 uh, and the Brewers at 824. And you got the Rockies, of course, at 825. But yeah, I mean, middle of the pack, maybe like top six or eight here, but... What apparently is really going to make the difference is our pitching with 533 runs against. You can see our 3.11 ERA is like, I don't know, half a run better than the next team. Uh, the Dodgers are at 3.64. The Padres at 3.61, actually exactly half a run. So uh, really loving our pitching. Um, if you look here at the top pitchers, Luis Castillo, DeGrom, Gossman, Verlander. So four of our five starting pitchers are there in the top pitchers. Uh, Castillo, a 2.9 ERA. Yeah, I think we'd take that. I think we'd take that. I think we'd take a 3.05 from DeGrom, although I hope he overachieves that. Uh, hitter side of thing, nothing nothing doing. I don't know. I, I, I think our offense would be better than, than this. Um, yeah, the 776, but... We'll get into that in a second. Uh, elsewhere around the leagues, you got league, you got Red Sox, White Sox, Angels predicted to win their divisions, and then of course the Mets, Brewers, and Dodgers. Um, Wander here predicted to be one of the top hitters. Um, Andrew Vaughn, that's fun. And let's see, oh Mize is up here. Um, Chris Bassett predicted to be a top pitcher. Marcus Stroman, who ended up signing with Seattle on just a one-year, $4 million deal after declining the uh, qualifying offer from us. Uh, that didn't work out too well for him, but the AI still believes in him. Um, let's see, what else we have going on here? Bellinger, Albi, Soto, Carlson, that's fun. For some reason, uh, Andrew Stevenson is predicted to be a top hitter. He's making $1.2 million this year. Uh, he put up a WRC plus of 104 last year in Colorado, but uh, on this simulation, he really tore it up, I guess. And then no big surprises here, although it's pretty cool to see Mackenzie Gore there. Uh, he pitched last year, he pitched 119 innings, you can see, with a really good ERA and FIP. So he's coming along better here than he has in real life. So as a reminder, this is our team. Uh, we, you know, none of the starters are a surprise. We got uh, Real Muto behind the plate that we traded for, Smith at first base, and Alonzo is down at DH. I think those are kind of interchangeable. Uh, Corey Seager, of course, our second baseman. Who else? Uh, Correa, our third baseman. Who else? Uh, and then Lindor. And then I remember I did sign Chris Taylor to be my fourth outfielder to a nice $2.69 million deal. Uh, late in the offseason in February, but then uh, Buck has him starting over Nimmo, and I assume that's against lefties too, yeah. Uh, so that was surprising, and honestly, I'd rather see Nimmo play, especially against righties, but here we are. Uh, Robles and McNeil is playing in right field. Uh, you can see the rest of our team, like our bench, is uh, Roberto Perez, our starting catcher from last year, and then we've got Guillaume, who is our starting second baseman for a good piece of last year. Uh, very good fielder, so he'll be on the bench. Um, and then who else is on our bench here? Albert Almora Jr., of course, uh, who really is just here because of his outfield range. He's insurance in center field if something were to happen to Robles. And then Nimmo will uh, play around. It looks like he, you know, he's going to get at-bats at a bunch of different places, left field, right field, DH, 
Pitching staff-wise, uh, Verlander getting the ball on opening day, according to Buck. Then DeGrom, Castillo, Carrasco, Gossman. Uh, and let's see, bullpen, Tommy Canely is going to be the closer, apparently, over Edwin Diaz, last year's closer. Uh, this back end of the bullpen, I think, could be awesome. Canely, Diaz, Anderson. I do wish one of them was a lefty, but uh, such is life. Uh, Sapuki, Sapuki, you guys let me know. Uh, he is like the 101st best prospect prospect in baseball he put up a league average era plus in triple a last year so he's out of the bullpen giselman's get there lugo uh david peterson and andrew miller who we signed uh for more lefty depth looks like he's going to be more of like a specialist type role uh this is not the way i would have the bullpen set up if i was uh running the team but again this is buck's team it's the whole point we're letting him do his thing uh we have we do have some more money available uh then maybe we were thinking we have 16 million available for free agents uh we have uh uh ronnie is it Mar mauricio uh so he is the number 27 prospect in baseball last year as a 20 year old he absolutely destroyed double a i left him there all year because i had him work on some defense and he only had shortstop eligibility then or position rating i should say uh so he worked up his second base some um, right field as well maybe we'll get him some left field action uh, he's not going to be excellent anywhere. Um, and with this range, only a 55, I don't see him being second base. And the arm only being a 60, I don't see him being third base. I think he could play either, uh, like in a pinch. But And if his bat is really good, I can live with this 55 uh, infield range at second. Uh, but I think I see him more as probably an everyday left or right fielder, to be honest. Um you know, I, I, I wish he, I saw him playing second base. And I think he could if his, I mean, if his bat is, <laughs> becomes on as well as it has in double A, uh, obviously he can play anywhere. Uh, our only other top 100 prospect is Pete Crow Armstrong. He had a very solid year between rookie and A ball last year. He'll start in high A, possible future center fielder if the bat develops. Um, the glove is there. Uh, Sapuki. And then Alex Mooney, who we drafted 10th overall last year. Uh, and he had a decent year in rookie ball. Uh, he'll start the year in low A. So those are our top 100 prospects. So that's what we're looking at going into the season. Uh, we open in or in New York against Philadelphia. So do you guys just kind of want? Let's let's just see what happens here. Let's let's go ahead and. Uh, well, you know what? I can't. I've got to look at the waiver wire to make sure there's nobody out there. I'm sure I'm not going to claim any of you off of waivers for this team, but I'm going to do a little bit more work. Uh, and then we'll jump ahead and, uh, you know, I'll check in. We'll, we'll jump this episode ahead, uh, I don't know, a ways. So uh, that's the season. Let's go Mets. All right, it's, so it's June 20th now. We're 37 and 28. Uh, we hit a little bit of a skid here recently, some adversity. We got swept by the Braves in a four-game series here in June. We're still up by three and a half games over the Nats, but uh, our lead sh <laughs> Our lead is not what it was. Uh, you can see Pythagorean, we expect to have 40 wins. We have a plus 74 run differential. We're the only team in our division with a positive run differential. You can see uh, the Nats and the Braves, the ones who are kind of in our neighborhood, are both overachieving their Pythagorean by three games. We're underachieving. Uh, we're 1-5 in, in extra innings. We're 11-11 11 in, 11 in one-run games. Uh, so, you know, it's it's been a decent season. It was looking a lot better until the last couple of weeks when we really just hit a bad skid. Uh, Alonzo is third in the NL in homers. McNeil is up there in OPS. Lindor is up there in, in war. Uh, we got Castillo on the leaderboard in wins. DeGrom on the leaderboard in strikeouts. Uh, that's it for, uh, for the Mets on the leaderboard. Um, getting into here, let's go by WRC+. Plus. Uh, you can see Jeff McNeil is just ripping it up here with a 170 WRC plus. Chris Taylor, uh, a 140 WRC plus and lost his starting job. So go figure. <laughs> Buck gave him the starting job over Nimmo. He absolutely lit it up. And then at some point, Nimmo has been put back in charge. Okay. Uh, so Lindor is having another great year. What's he on pace for? Uh, 8.5 war. So not quite on pace for his 10.1, which uh, won him MVP last year. But... Still a very good season so far. Uh, Alonso, Guillaume, Seager, all okay. Uh, you know, Seager, a little disappointing there, I guess you could say, for for him in his first season. Real Muto, same. Not 
not what we were hoping for exactly. Dom Smith's been okay. Uh, so the Correa era in New York continues to be an issue. A 67 WRC+. plus. He's hitting 230. A slug of 343. I mean, what's what's going on at this point? It's not BABIP. His BABIP is 294. His strikes, strikeouts are up. Walks are down. Uh, I don't know, man. So, yeah, his WRC plus and OPS plus actually in... Yeah, he's got, a um, what, almost 500 plate appearances here with us, and they're exact same. 67 WRC plus, 73 OPS plus. So that's concerning. Uh, you know, pitching side of things, you can see we've, we've been good. Castillo's having a really good year uh, ERA-wise with the 165, but his FIP of 4.16 is uh, a 98 FIP minus, so right around league average. Verlander, something weird happened here, man. Like, he got hurt, and I sent him down, and then I called him back up, I don't know, like like early May, I think. And for some reason, the computer changed it so I was in charge of lineups and rotation. Did I do that at some point in accident? I don't know. But Verlander was just, like, hanging out in the bullpen without a specified role. So he's back in the rotation now. He's been, but he missed like a month just sitting in the bullpen because <laughs> I didn't notice it. I haven't been, you know, I haven't been paying as much attention to the lineups and the rotation as I normally do. I've actually been simming like a week at a time, which I don't normally do. Uh, but he's been very good uh, when he's been in there. So that, you know, our pitching staff was basically down a pitcher for an extended period, uh, and Verlander was the guy. Uh, Degrom is having a, uh, you know, a good year here with a uh a 123 wrc plus so he's on pace for 5.5 r war but his fip is much more around league average on pace for three war so hopefully he can get better uh gossman is following up his mvp or not mvp his year where he finished fourth in cy young with a pretty league average year so the first year of his four-year deal is you know it's looking fine it's okay uh taiwan walker is in the bullpen struggling uh, Canely's been okay. Diaz, Nick Anderson has been excellent with a 1.08 ERA. Uh, but really, you know, we've been towards the top of the league in a lot of things. We're fourth in runs scored. We're second and third in OPS and slugging. Uh, we're third in runs allowed, tied for third. And we're first in a bunch of fielding stats. So, uh, so if, you know, if we were at 40 wins, things would be looking a lot better. But uh, you can see the Padres down here, given given the Dodgers run for their money. But again, you know, things were looking better until we hit a skid here. We lost three of four and then beat uh, the Cubs. And then we lost, what, seven in a row and eight of nine. So, you know, lost eight of, yeah, eight of nine. And then we went to Arizona and things got right. We went, we took three out of four from them. Uh, so yeah, that seems like a good stopping point. I was, I was going to do it like sometime around the 54 game mark, the third, uh, the third of the way through the season, but things were just going really poorly there. Um, but I think we can bounce back here. I got the pitching staff figured out now. Verlander is not just sitting in the bullpen. Uh, we're pretty healthy and yeah, hopefully some of these guys can pick up their season and start p pitching like aces, especially in front of the defense that we have. I don't know what's going on with Correa. It would be nice if Seager could, you know, be better than, like, a decent player for us. <laughs> uh, so, you know, be more like Victor Robles with a 6.3 war. But we'll see. You know, things are going fine. Uh, no disaster. Just uh, would like to see the team uh, humming a little better here as we move into the midway point and the trade deadline. Uh, we'll have some decisions to make if uh, Mr. Carlos Correa is still performing how he is now. But, uh, yeah, 37 and 28. Let's go ahead a little further. All right, so we went ahead about a month. We're now at July 22nd. We're still in first place. We're up by five and a half games. We're nearing close to the uh, trade deadline. By the way, I, I, just, I had to adjust some, like, sound settings on my computer and my mic from the time I stopped the last recording of this one and it was I recognize it's mid episode so if the sound jumped or is weird in this one sorry so let's get into some of the developments here we've had some injuries uh to the big club 
And the biggest one is Victor Robles, uh, severe hip strain, missing about three months. He went out on July 1st. He's out for another two months. I mean, this, he had 3.2 war in 66 games, a 137 OPS plus. Like, I mean, the dude was straight up, like, playing MVP level baseball for us. And that's a, that's a tough injury to overcome uh, to your, you know, your star center fielder. Center fielder, man, center field and shortstop injuries are just brutal. Um, and then Kevin Gossman, who is not having a great year for us, but was still, you know, in our rotation. He has an elbow strain. Uh, he went out on July 11th, and he'll be out for two more months. So Robles and Gossman are both due back, like, mid to late September. Uh, Seth Lugo, uh, Torres Labrum, uh, not nearly as devastating. I mean, this is just a bullpen guy who's fine. So, you know, the first order of business here was is <laughs> replacing Robles. Um, you can see, oh, you can see I've, I've, I don't have much minor league depth. Like, <laughs> if I have injuries, like, I'm kind of screwed at some position. So bringing back Jed Lowry, who was a legend for us last year, I gave all these guys super small bonuses, way smaller than they were looking for, but just trying to add some depth uh, to AAA in case we have injuries. And guys, it won't take up spots on the 40-man. So trade block, you know, if you just kind of go by, no, not fielding stats, fielding ratings um, and outfield range. You can see Jankowski, that's not going to happen. I'm not bringing, oh, he's also out for three months, but he wouldn't be adequate anyways. Uh, but you can see Kevin Kiermeyer is the only other guy with a 70 or higher outfield range. Uh, Kiermeyer's a pretty enticing player to bring in, especially given that he has a team option with a $0 buyout next year. So we're really just bringing him in for the rest of this year. Who knows after that? I don't think I'd bring him back. But you never know. Uh, if you watch my Philly sim, he was my center fielder for several seasons. And, you know, with this glove, like, his bat doesn't need to be great. His bat has been league average this year. He's on pace for 3.1 war. Pretty decent. Um, zone rating is nowhere near, like, elite here with the 2.8 uh, in 85 games. You can see last year in 110 games, he put up 5.7 zone rating. So, but he's, you know, he's by far the best thing that's out there for us. You can see right now in center field, we've got Albert Almora Jr., who, who is our fourth or fifth outfielder, fifth outfielder, I guess, but he's our best center fielder. But I mean, this is just not going to get the job done here. And we called up Jake Magnum, who again is, you know, fine to have come up as a fifth outfielder for a short period of time. And then pitching side of things, Taiwan Walker jumped into the rotation for Gossman uh, and Sapuki. Spucky, Spucky, uh, came up. So, yeah. Let's get into the trade, though. I'm showing you all that because this will all make sense in a second here. So, the, uh, the Rays aren't real interested in, uh, like, getting prospects like they Taiwan Walker was a guy they're really interested in this is my fifth starter right now player option for six million next year we can get Yarbrough to come in but I'm not sure I really want to do that because I think I can do yeah this deal instead um, and that's the best so Anthony Walters is you know a 24 year old high eight infielder a guy having a good year in high a but i don't think this guy's going anywhere it's basically walker for kiermeyer they're gonna eat six hundred thousand, uh which doesn't really matter that much uh, i would rather them eat some more to try to get it closer to like budget neutral but it's just gonna cost like an actual decent player or prospect to get them to eat much of anything on it so you know, even if I go to 10%, like, it's really not worth 5% of the deal for any of those guys. So, you know, we're going to eat a little bit of money. Uh, or, or I guess we're going to lose a little bit of uh, of avail budget space. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, I should have drank my coffee before this video, huh? Uh, so we dropped by 1.9. Now, this would clear out Walker, who is like our fifth starter, and we're a team trying to make some noise here. So it doesn't make sense to subtract from Major League roster too often. Uh, so I went out and 
really one pitcher who really intrigues me here is uh Robbie Ray. He's having a now, this is not the Robbie Ray who was amazing for the Blue Jays. You can see in, in real life in 2021. You, you can see for the Blue Jays here and out of the park, he had a 5.38 ERA, a 5.56 FIP. He walked 5.6 guys per nine and gave up two home runs per nine. He's walking 6.5 guys per nine this year. Uh, but his FIP is, you know, around league average. And I think, I don't know, I find this arm really intriguing with the great stuff, an amazing curveball, a fantastic slider, a really good fastball. And I think we can get away with this movement being not great in New York. And he's going to come play in front of the best defense in the league, according to his own rating and efficiency. Like, I don't know. I kind of want to give this a chance. And I think even if he doesn't work out as a starter, I think he'd be a great reliever. So what would we be giving up? Uh, just two 26-year-old minor league pitchers who are both having good years. Um, you know, this guy's putting up, he's put up 2.4 R war. He's got an ERA plus of 127, but, you know, he's 26. He's almost 27. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and same thing with this guy, another 26-year-old who's having a really good year in AA on pace for 5 R war and 3.6 war. So, I don't know. I like. I, and they're also eating his entire salary. So, I'm pretty into this deal. Uh, you know, I would be more interested if they would give me like Herman Marquez, but, uh, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think like both of these deals make sense. Basically bringing in Kiermaier and Ray and getting rid of Walker. Um, so yeah. And I think Ray might be able, I think we can, I think there's some ceiling here that we could tap into. I'm excited about bringing in Robbie Ray. So I'm going to go do these deals. Uh, you know, after that, hmm, it's a good question. Oh, I got the splits on July. Let me go to none. You know, I think if you if you look here, Correa is a problem. Real Muto has not been great at the plate. 79 WRC plus. Now, he's still on pace for 2.3 war, but not the Real Muto season we were hoping for. Definitely not. Um, but, you know, as long as he can keep, keep the co uh, pitching staff going, we'll be okay. Uh, so yeah, Taylor would be our fourth outfielder. Almora will go back to the fifth. Kiermaier would go in here. You know, could I look to move Smith or Alonzo? Maybe. They both have really high trade value and they're kind of redundant. Um, and it would make room for Taylor to get more at bats and, uh, maybe Guillaume to get more at bats. Because Alonzo is not really having that great of a season. I mean, a 112 WRC plus. Smith is, has a 109 WRC plus, like for first base and DHs, like that's not that great. I think I'll end up holding on to both. Uh, bullpen wise, I think we're pretty good. Like, I don't know. I could see maybe bringing another starter and pushing Ray to the bullpen as another boss bullpen arm. I could see maybe getting rid of Andrew Miller, making room for somebody else. Cause he only pitched 12 innings as a specialist. So we'll see. But I'm going to make those two trades and then uh, hop up to the trade deadline here and uh, see how we're doing. All right. We're up to the trade deadline, July 31st. Uh, Kiermaier is here, and he's in center field, and he's he's batting leadoff, which I didn't anticipate and don't love, but here we are. He's played eight games with a 167 WRC+. plus. So if he can keep that up in his 429 BABIP, um, sure, he can bat leadoff. Uh, but, hey, do your thing, Buck Showalter. Uh, and Robbie Ray actually got put in the bullpen in a setup role, which I don't hate uh, in a vacuum. I think on this team, I'd rather see him in the rotation. But David Peterson is there, who has put up uh, decent numbers in 74 innings with a 3.74 ERA, a 4.11 FIP. Uh, Robbie Ray has pitched five innings in three games, and he struck out 19.8 guys per nine out of the pen. Uh, just crazy stuff and pitches here for a reliever. So I was thinking of making a trade for another starter to basically bump Peterson back to the bullpen, maybe bump, I don't know, Mears or somebody back to the minors for more depth. There wasn't a lot out there. Uh, trade block. In terms of start, oops, in terms of starters, uh, Sonny Gray was a guy I had my eye on though, and I had a deal worked out and I was kind of like, all right, let's take it up to the date, the deadline. And then yesterday he pitched and he got hurt and he's out. Uh, 
yeah, so I don't think I'm going to make that trade without knowing what that injury is. So I think that deal's off the table. Could always go get old friend Marcus Stroman, who is on a cheap deal, just a one-year deal. And, you know, he he, uh, he pitched well in New York last year. And I don't know. Uh, to be honest, like, until right now, I didn't realize he was on the trade block. Let's just see. Like, did they just want anything for him or do they want something? It looks like they want something. Uh, yeah, I don't really know about giving up, like, uh, like, I mean, this is one of the worst guys. My 16th round pick, who's, I mean, he's out hurt, but, like, I don't know. This, like, I don't really see the need. Like, I feel like Stroman is a luxury for this team, which I guess you kind of want <laughs> guys like this around as more depth if you're trying to do the thing, because what happens if I get more injuries, right? Here's my ninth round pick from last year, who's 19, but again, like, you know, I hate giving up a 19 year old because like his ceiling could just get so much better. And I, I mean, I'm willing to give up prospects. Obviously I could give up King. He's kind of older. It's Mathis guy. I don't remember eighth round pick last year. It's two way player. Again, he just turned 19 though. Mm. I don't know, y'all. Sam McWilliams, I think I'd be fine giving him up. He's just like, I mean, he's a 40-man guy. <laughs> Is Stroman any better than him, though? I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, I'm not convinced that Stroman's a lot better than him, but he's had more major league success. So why don't we do this trade, then? Will you also will you just pay all his salary, too? They will. Fantastic. Thank you for being so agreeable. Can you give me a closer as well? No, you won't give me that guy. All right. I mean, I think this is a no-brainer. Trading a guy who's in the minors on the 40-man and hurt for Stroman, and uh, we're actually getting rid of a league minimum salary. Yeah, okay, that's a no-brainer. And our fans are happy that Stroman's back. be interesting to see what Buck does with them. So I think we're going to send... Uh, we'll send Mears. No. Both of these guys have been good. We'll send Sapoki down. Put Stroman in. And let's see where... All right. So, yeah, he puts him in as the fifth starter. So, that makes more sense to me. I like this depth better. We are going to give him a pitch limit, though. We'll give him 85 pitches. Cool. Okay. So, I feel a little bit better about the depth here. Bring him back old friend Marcus Stroman. Um, yeah, so that's the team. We are 59 and 39. We are nine and a half games up. Uh, yeah. And I don't know. I think, I think we can, we can win this division. I don't think that's the problem. And hopefully we'll be able to have more success in the postseason. But I think that's all the trades. I don't, you know, I could go out and get a third baseman, but man, like Carlos Correa, just like be yourself, man. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot out of there on the trade block, nor is there much out there in other third basemen that I've looked at, unless it's changed in the last, like, couple of days. Yeah, I mean, I could always, I guess, try for Yandy Diaz, but, like, I don't know if that's going to end up being, like, anything better than what we've got, right? Same with Matt Carpenter. Like, I don't know. I think, I think we just kind of roll with Correa and hope he becomes Correa. Like, his upside is so high, and I don't see anybody else here that's, like, that has that potential. I mean, definitely nobody with that upside, but there's also, like, they're just kind of meh. Very meh options. So, yeah, this is the team we're going to roll with. Uh, we're 59 and 39. Hopefully we'll cruise into the postseason here. Uh, thanks for watching. This episode we'll pick up next time at the end of the 2022 season with your Buck Showalter New York Mets. Talk to everybody then.